G'day fellas, well this is only just a quick preview fellas at the Wajin Historical Museum. I'm not joking fellas, there's that literally thousands and thousands of uh, historical items here, ranging from old tractors like this, and uh, bulldozers, graders, machinery, antique bottles, every single bit of antique uh, history fellas, you, you name it, it's here. It's just amazing, this is only a tiny fraction, it me um, a day of videos just to show you exactly what's in here. So this is just one shed guys, they've got everything here, old schools that have been deconstructed and then reconstructed and beautiful machinery, historical photos, Aboriginal relics, tools, boomerangs, everything to do with uh, the Wajin area. Like there, there's all, that's the old, an old train station there, what's been reconstructed, an old school, what's been transported here, old school halls, heaps of wagon, uh, like heaps of stuff like this, old wagon, or wheels and um, plows and scarifiers and discs, cultivators, like this kind of stuff. It's all been donated by local farmers and residents. So I've just taken a heap of photos guys, so enjoy, this is here, is an old school, oh no sorry, <laughs> it's an old hospital, look at this, the orderly's house, it looks like, yeah, so see it's a quarantined ward for the Wajin Hospital used to isolate patients with infectious diseases, so yeah, so this has been, this was at the Wajin Hospital, it's been deconstructed and reconstructed and brought here, it's amazing. And they've constructed heaps of stuff around here, like here. This is what the old huts used to look like back in the old day. So this is an old dairy, and all the old dairy equipment where they do all the creams and cheeses and stuff like that. There's a, another wooden structure over there. It's all been made out of bush, like this. Little sheds made out of uh, bush, mallee roots, and uh, tea tree, and all other different types of... Uh, Bush equipment and blacksmiths here has been built. It's just amazing, guys. So you could spend a whole, probably at least half a day here looking at everything. What's this over here? An old wool press, just there. This here looks like to be an old pioneer's hut, the way they used to live, the early pioneers. All old wool presses in here. So this is how they would live back in the old days, guys. Old bed there, stretcher, grinding stone here. I've found these before, not as big as this one, but I've found probably about five out in the bush. And yeah, it's just a beautiful spot if you're coming through. Look at this. Look at these old cast iron pots, guys. It is beautiful. Beautiful old telephone insulators there fellas, all the different types of insulators. I found heaps like that around my area, out in the bush along old railway tracks. Trading post wagering, beautiful enamel signs. Kangaroo skins, this is how they used to dry out the kangaroo skins and possum skins guys back in the old days. Scales, all tools, more kangaroo skins, beautiful enamel signs. Tools. A lot of the stuff I see here, guys, I actually find what farmers and that throw out. This is my favourite. 
I've got heaps of bottles like this guys, I've got probably over a hundred beautiful old bottles like this in my collection. Maybe one day I'll donate it to the Waging Historical Society myself and all my metal detecting pines, I don't know. But all this kind of stuff, on, you know, you find this stuff when you go bottle digging. Beautiful old stuff, with all these beautiful old antique bottles. I've got about three, at least 3,000 antique bottles, guys, in my collection. I'm overwhelmed with it all. Drives me crazy, to tell you the truth. All this stuff here. And unfortunately, you know, I look at all this stuff, fellas, and when I lost my business to pay off my debts, I had beautiful stuff all like this when I'd found it, rubbish dumps and so forth, what farmers have thrown out. And unfortunately, I had to sell it all. I sold probably over a thousand of my beautiful, you know, antique collection of all historical stuff that I'd found out like rubbish dumps, what people throw away. You know, I don't regret it, but far out. It's... Nearly brings me to tears thinking about it, guys. I've got heaps of beautiful old tins like that. Beautiful old poison bottles like that, tins, I've sold heaps of tins. So like I could say guys, this is a Wajin historical village, the beautiful town Wajin. Wajin's only about 40 kilometres from my hometown. And there's plenty of accommodation here in Wajin if you want to stay. What's this one here guys, this is interesting. Gallipoli, old tenth light horse guys, I actually found some beautiful 10th light horse badges, collar badges, as rare as anything. I've got one, guys, and guess what? My nasty ex partner stole the other one. Devastating. I'll show you, there's a link below to the videos of when I found it, guys. These more bottles here. Well, I love finding old tins like this, guys. Amazing what people throw out, fellas. Especially when people die, they just go for the whole houses and throw everything out. Like I say, I'm looking at all these beautiful tins and relics and I've seen a lot of stuff I used to own myself that I've sold on eBay, unfortunately. But I've still got plenty of nice relics. One day I'll donate it somewhere. Don't know about my local town, guys. I'm I don't know if they'd really appreciate it. Beautiful stuff like that. All that. Beautiful old pins. Suitcases. They're very collectible. Beautiful suitcases like that. I find out the tips. Scales. Look at that. Lanterns. Find that kind of stuff. Metal detecting. Beautiful cast iron stoves for cooking stews and pickles and tools, beautiful old prams, kids prams, the old gas lanterns guys, I found those bottle digging before, heaps of stuff like that, bottle digging. Extremely popular this little museum. This is actually the first time I've ever been here.
Like I say, fellas, most of these buildings here have been deconstructed and moved to this actual museum area. It's pretty amazing, hey? All done by volunteers. The old post office. Some of them have also just been built. The Wage and Argus, this is our local uh, newspaper. It doesn't exist anymore, fellas. It's only just closed in the last, probably the last two years. So it's a historic newspaper. Everyone used to look forward to it every Thursday. And yeah, so this is the old Wage and Argus, see? That's where I come from, Dumble Young. So the Wage and Argus, Arthur River. Dumbuyong and Lake Grace Express, these are all local towns. All the printing presses, I find heaps of beautiful stuff like this, metal detecting guys, remains of old printing press, pieces like that, advertisement, as, oh, this is what I find a lot of metal detecting guys, stuff like this, advertisements. Yeah, it's really beautiful, I love finding those. I've actually found those in, in actually waging before as well. At a secret metal detecting spot. Well, I'm actually going to go now too and just go for a walk and see if there's any surface lines. And this is the old bootmakers shop, guys. We used to have all this stuff in my hometown in Dumbuyong as well, like all these type of shops. You know, my hometown probably used to have a population of about probably well over a thousand back in the probably 1920s, and now it's struggling to uh, struggling with probably 200 people who live in the town. You know, the, the local schools at risk of closing. There's only when I was at school, there's probably about 300 kids. Um, but now there's only about probably 30 or 40 kids there, so extreme risk of uh, the whole place closing. So I'll quickly go over here and show you fellas some tractors and stuff. Like I say, guys, it's massive this place, and I'm just kind of rushing, so excuse my rushing. But yep, here. It wages about 200 kilometres southeast of Perth on the Albany Highway, fellas. So Wagen's also famous for the Wagen Wallarama. The annual sheep uh, agricultural show, you know, around I think approximately around the first or the second weekend in March every year, they get quite a few, many, probably 10,000 people turn up. It's like a big local show. Kids, you know, they've got all the uh, all the rides. You know, it's just like a, going to like an adventure world type thing. the merry-go-rounds and uh, roller coasters and 
the octopus rides and all that kind of stuff, the clown, you know, spinning clowns, the heads and everything. It's an absolutely awesome event. So I'll put information to all everything I've said down below in the links, guys. So if you are from West Australia or planning on coming to uh, Western Australia, make sure you try and come down to Wajin. Visit the town of Wajin, not only Wajin, visit Dongbyong, especially Lake Dongbyong. Absolutely beautiful. could easily spend at least half a day there and they've got over there where everyone's sitting nice uh, village tea rooms they serve coffee cakes scone and everything else Barbershop here fellas, Lord of Regional Wage and Tennis Club sign, yeah, a beautiful old barbershop, tell you what guys, I'd rather be living back in the 1900s than these disgusting days we live in, the days full of all the awful greed and materialism and all that kind of stuff, these are our footy players, the Wage and Football players, Wagens produce some amazing AFL footy players like Peter Matera, the Matera brothers and many others. Not only has Wagen produced amazing footy AFL Australian Football League football players, but Dunweyung has as well. And Cookran, Ross Ditchburn, Ricky Mott and plenty of other players. My brother-in-law actually is a uh, coach or was the coach of the Wickerman Football Club. And he uh, got fairest and best. He was a champion football player as well. And he's actually a radio commentator now. His son has actually got fairest and best in one of the Perth football clubs in Perth, West Australia. So he's a champion footy player as well. But my brother-in-law, Kim Malvin, Yogi, is very, very highly respected around the area where I live, the great southern area of Western Australia. Champion sportsman all around. Football, cricket, golf.